Assalamu alaikum hello and welcome to hashtag LNT episode 21 or the late night talk with Ahmed Ali coming to you live from the holy city of Karbala. Now, the night of the 21st of Ramadan is among uh, the nights of destiny uh, where a person is recommended to go and supplicate, days of supplications and nights of supplications towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they are also days of mourning and nights of mourning. If you know why, keep on watching. If you don't know why, continue to watch as we go to check out what's trending and we'll be back very short so do stay tuned welcome back dear viewers now uh yesterday was apple's wwdc uh, event in california where the ceo tim cook uh, along with apple executives uh previewed the new software for the iPhones, for the iPads, iMacs, uh, and the Apple Watch. Uh, and the company uh, announced its next generation mobile software, um, iOS 12, is packed with performance improvements, uh, quick features, uh, and many, many features. So if you do have an iPhone like myself, we got to go get that. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, they're, they're saying it's a lot better than the ones before. Uh, because honestly, the 11 is, is sort of say it's garbage. Uh, so we're trying to get the 12 to check what's what's good with that. But what else is trending? A 150-year-old dinosaur skeleton is under the hammer. And uh, it was sold for 2.36 million. So that's approximately 2 million euros, which is crazy. Um, now, scientists uh, can't really tell what kind of dinosaur it was, but all they know is a carnivorous uh, theropod, uh, which uh, they're saying uh, that dinosaur uh, is from that kind of species, but it's crazy. Two million euros, uh, if someone had that, that would be crazy. It was sold in Paris at the first floor of the Eiffel Tower. But that's it for what's trending. Let's go and check out what tonight's topic is all about, because it's pretty nice. I like it. Welcome back, dear viewers. Now, um, the succession of the Caliph after the demise of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny, has been a topic that has been discussed for many decades now uh, and uh, have been discussed among the Islamic ummahs, uh, whatever denomination they be following. Now, the different denominations of Islam argue that for each one there's a specific caliph um, and each one uh, or there are two that believe there's one specific caliph that's supposed to become after the prophet and there's others among the other denominations um, saying that there are different caliphs who took after prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now tonight I'm not trying to uh, raise up some uh, differences between Sunnis and Shias but tonight it's a very simple question for you guys very simple very very simple we're trying to find out tonight on hashtag LNT in 3, 2, 1. Who is your caliph? Simple question. Let us know who your caliph is. Uh, and uh, you can share that and you can participate by picking up your phone, opening WhatsApp. Uh, you can dial the number shown right now, plus 9647740671836. And you can let us know uh, via WhatsApp free so you're not spending a dime. Um, everyone has data, everyone has Wi Fi, so you can go check us out. You can also check us out on Facebook. We are live there as well. Uh, so you can let us know uh, at Imam Hussein 3 TV. Now, whoever participates in tonight's uh, episode or in the upcoming episodes by via call, uh, WhatsApp message, uh, WhatsApp call, WhatsApp message, a voice note, voice message on WhatsApp, or the comment on Facebook, you're going to get a ticket just like this one right here in this special envelope right here. Give me that shot. This envelope is going towards you for a treat, for a free trip to, uh, to come to Karbala exclusive on our house, wherever you are in the world. If your name gets pulled out of this fishbowl right here, no, give me that camera. Out of this fishbowl right here to get your name, to get this ticket to come to Karbala. So we're giving you guys a chance, an amazing chance to come to this holy city, but Let's go take a very short break and come back to discuss more about tonight's topic. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome back, dear viewers. Hope, inshallah, you're enjoying your night tonight. Uh, you're spending your nights, uh, especially these nights, uh, in uh, supplications and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, in the Shia belief, uh, the caliphate is a divine order sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and examined by Prophet Muhammad and mentioned by Prophet Muhammad and specified one individual according to Sunni and Shia hadith including the hadith of the house, the hadith of the manzila, manzila meaning the position, the hadith of Thaqalain, which everyone knows, the hadith of Ghadir, as well as many, many other narrations that mention there's one specific individual who should have got the caliphate right after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is the caliph, the original caliph. To prove one thing, that this individual was the most suitable person and his children, the infallible children of this individual were the ones who should have succeeded as the caliphs after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are many narrations that explicit, that provide explicit evidence for that this individual, we're not mentioning that name yet, hope you know who that person is. Now we'll go some through events and some Quranic verses to let you know who, or to give you some hints on who that person is. Now the first one is mentioned in chapter 5 verse 55 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily your wali protector or helper is Allah, his messengers and those who believe, those who perform salat, prayer and give zakat, alms, while they bow. You know, it's, it's usual for someone to give uh, or, or to pray, you know, it's for, for a Muslim to bow in prayer, to prostrate in prayer. Prayer, one of the mandatory things in Islam, but to give zakat, that's something out of prayer. But to include both of them together is a characteristic that only one person did. And if you're guessing Ali ibn Talib, I'm Ali ibn Talib, then you're guessing right because that's the person who should have received the caliphate after, after Prophet Muhammad and should, who should have been the caliph. But the question for tonight, you guys, just to say it again, who is your caliph? If your caliph is other than Imam Ali, let us know and let us know why he is your caliph. The number is shown below to call, it, to call us. Uh, another verse which is mentioned in Ahzab, verse 33. Another characteristic that who the caliph should be. Now, this is a very well-known narration. Sorry, well, very well-known verse uh, among every single Islamic sect. Al-Ahzab verse 33, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Allah surely wants to remove the impurities from you, O people of the house. Now, who are the people of the house? Who are the Ahlul Bayt? You know, for someone to lead the Ummah, if you were to look at any leader right now, because a leader would be, can be considered as a caliph, but if you were to look at any leader in the world right now, whether elected properly or not elected properly, the main virtues and the main traits that a leader should possess are traits that are honorable, traits that, you know, that he's brave, that he knows what he's doing, he knows how, 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 to, how to run his country, integrity, uh, is honest, he's, he's not lying to his nation, are one of or many of the characteristics that a, a caliph should possess. Now, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is removing all impurities from the household, which Ali ibn Talib, Imam Ali ibn Talib, is included in that household and is a part of that household, then you can probably uh, think of where I'm going at this moment. Now, another event where really sheds light on the importance uh, of the individual that we're commemorating tonight, or we're talking about tonight, and the person the, who you uh, should consider, uh, well, well, let's leave that, I don't want to continue that, but in Al-Mubahala, the event of Mubahala, mentioned in chapter 3, verse 61, a group of Christians came to Prophet Muhammad. They wanted him to prove his prophethood. They rejected. So he said, let us go to a specific mountain, uh, valley, sorry, and try to do some kind of contest, like a curse contest, and see which one does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse. So he said, bring yourselves, and I'll bring myself. Bring your family, bring your woman, and I'll bring my woman. Bring your children and I'll bring my children, and then we'll see which side does Allah curse. Everyone in Mecca, or everyone in Medina, when they heard that, 
they were like, oh, who is the Prophet going to choose? Because he, he says, bring yourselves and I'll bring myself. Bring your woman. Do not say bring one woman. Bring your woman and I'll bring my woman. Bring your children and I'll bring my children. Everyone thought that the Prophet was going to choose you know, randomly from the Muslim Ummah. When the Prophet showed up on that day, just with Ali ibn Talib, Fatimah al-Zahra, and he was carrying Al-Hasan and Hussein in his hands, proved that the individuals that accompanied Prophet Muhammad during that event and during that mission were individuals not to mess with, were individuals that were really chosen by God. Because even the Christians at that time, when they saw Prophet Muhammad uh, bringing out his own family, risking his own family's life, because a curse is not a joke, a curse is death. So risking his family's life for his mission was something serious that everyone should take seriously. So that's one of the important things that uh, really prove that Ali ibn Talib is, is, is among uh, or should be the one uh, that rightly uh, succeeds Prophet Muhammad. But let's take a very short, quick break and come back very short. Welcome back, dear viewers. We do remind everyone for uh, call to call in tonight and let us know what you think. The number is present at the bottom right there. Uh, plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six. Uh, we just received a message answering the question: Who is your caliph? What did they say? Okay, Fazi Moon again from Trinidad. She says, Imam Ali is my caliph and my imam after my beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings uh, be upon him. Thank you very much, Fazi Moon uh, from Trinidad for joining us again in tonight's episode. Now yesterday at the end of the episode we gave a special shout out to those who um, joined us regularly in every episode. Um, so uh, Fazi Moon's name was also in that shout out as well. So you can guys, if you want, go check it out. It's on YouTube uh, and inshallah you can check your names out there as well. Uh, now once again we do remind everyone uh, to call in and join us tonight and answer the question, who is your caliph? Who do you believe your caliph is? Is your caliph someone, someone, someone? Is your caliph present? Uh, is your caliph in history? Is your caliph, you know, whoever, whoever you think your caliph is, give us a call and let us know why you've chosen him to be your caliph. Now, many, as I mentioned earlier, there are a tremendous amount of narrations that really focus on how important the role of caliph is they break it down for us and they tell us exactly who that person is. But for tonight, I'm trying to give you guys some characteristics as to who your caliph should, who your caliph should be. And that's very important for tonight. Another narration which a lot of people and every single denomination takes into consideration is the narration of Ghadir. Now, if a person says, you know, you're, you're the characteristic or the merits or the, uh, the attributes of your leader should be honesty, should be integrity, and should be this and this, that's good. But if this individual already possesses these and he's not a caliph yet, yet the leader of that nation who everybody accepted to be righteous, who everybody accepted to be honest, chooses the caliph after him, then we're talking about Ghadir. We're talking about the events where Prophet Muhammad on his last farewell pilgrimage after returning from Mecca. He stopped at a place called Ghadir Khum. Long story short, he told everyone to stop. Pulpit was made. He got on the pulpit, addressed everyone saying that this is my last day. These are my last days with you guys. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm leaving this world. So I leave behind two worthy things. The Qur'an and the Ahlul Bayt. We know what the Qur'an is and we know who the Ahlul Bayt are. Now, he also does something else which is interesting. He picks up the hand of Ali ibn Talib and says, whoever I was their leader or whoever I was their, uh, their, their wali, their protector, their helper, their leader, then Ali is in the same position as I am. So technically, Prophet Muhammad did mention who the Caliph is. Now, if you're thinking someone else is your Caliph, do let us know and let us know why. We just received another text message from Asmat from India. A Caliph, 
A caliphate is a state under the little, the title, wow, wow, I'm sorry. A caliphate is a state under the title of a caliph. A person considered a religious successor to the Islamic prophet Muhammad and a lesser of the entire Muslim community. So Imam Ali at the end, Ali. Uh, thank you very much, Asmat. I believe your name is already in the bowl. Uh, it is in the bowl, so inshallah, we'll give everyone uh, the chance to participate. And uh, your name was also given in the shout out yesterday, so you can go check that out. Um, now, uh, we, we are receiving some Facebook comments, so we'll get to read them uh, very short, inshallah. But let's go and check what the expert has for us tonight because tonight is a very special episode uh, and tonight we're trying to commemorate the martyrdom of Imam Ali Talib السلام, which is very important uh, and to look at who is your caliph now let's go check out Sayyid Hussain Qazwini and what he has to say about tonight's topic <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعليه الطيبين الطاهرين. So, so who's your caliph? Is it someone who during the days of Jahiliya worshipped idols and perhaps worshipped an idol made out of dates and when he became hungry he would eat those dates? Is it someone who would drink alcohol and wine during the days of Jahiliya and was a normal person during the days of Jahiliya among the pagan, ignorant Arab at the time? Or is it someone who is immaculate, someone who is sincere, someone who is sinless, someone who was born in the house of Allah and died in the house of Allah? and spent his entire life serving Allah and serving the creation of Allah. So who's your caliph, the first or the second? Would anyone with their right mind, being logical and not being emotional, would abandon someone like Ali ibn Abi Talib who lived a humble life, a simple life, never eating, to the point that he would be full, never sleeping an entire night, never wasting an entire day, never spending a day without the remembrance of Allah, never coming across a creation of Allah that he ever oppressed. Amir al-Mu'mineen salam, he saw himself as an equal to all of Allah's creations the rich, the poor, the young, the old. Ali ibn Abi Talib did not see himself as having a higher position than anywhere else, than anyone else. He was a humble human being that walked humbly, that walked calmly on the face of this planet. Yet did people know his value? Did the people realize that Ali ibn Abi Talib is a special human being left by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa No one knew. The night that Rasulullah departed this life is so special that some believe Allah brought down one Qur'an and he took away another Qur'an. Some say that Amir al-Mu'mineen, the night that he passed away, the eve of the 21st, it could be Laylatul Qadr. And Laylatul Qadr is a night in which the Qur'an is revealed. And it could be a night in which the Qur'an was taken away. The verbal Qur'an, the vocal Qur'an, the living Qur'an was taken away. The written Qur'an was brought down. Allah took one Qur'an and He gave another Qur'an because people are in need of a Qur'an whether it's vocal or it's written, whether it's the living Qur'an or the written Qur'an. Amir al-Mu'mineen in his practices, in his behavior, in his relationships, he resembled the akhlaq of the Qur'an. If you'd like to know the akhlaq of Amir al-Mu'mineen, 
and so too the akhlaq of Rasulullah. All you have to do is look at the akhlaq of Rasulullah and you will know who is your caliph. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin. Thank you very much, uh, Sayyid Hassan Qazbini, for joining us tonight. And very, very uh, important uh, points he mentioned uh, in his part right there, where um, uh, you know he 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 actually made um, very crucial points. You know, he said, uh, "Who is your caliph? The one who uh, worshipped idols before Islam and ate, uh, or you know, the, the idols that he worshipped were made out of dates. When he was, when he was hungry, he ate those dates, or he was an alcoholic, or drank." alcohol before Islam and after Islam he repented or the person who stayed on the line of Islam and was willing to sacrifice his life for Islam from day one when no one was trying to support the Prophet only Imam Ali stood up and he was like what 11 12 years old um, stood up and mentioned how he was willing to take the responsibility of a Caliph you know one one interesting thing that not a lot of people understand Prophet Muhammad gave everyone the chance for them to actually coming forward and saying, I want to be caliph. First, in the Ma'bath al Nabawi, Al Ba'tha, he was sitting in the house of Abu Talib, Sha'ar Abu Talib, and he said, Who is willing to be my successor? Abu Talib was there, Fulan and Fulan and Fulan was there. Um, Mon all of Bani Hashim, all of the Muslims at that time were there. Prophet Muhammad asked, he said, who wants to be my successor? Imam Ali put his hand up, he stood up, he's like, I'll be your successor. Prophet Muhammad said, sit down. Then he asked again, who wants to be my successor? Imam Ali got up again, Prophet Muhammad said, said sit down. And then the third time, he took the hand of Imam Ali and he said, this is mentioned in both Bukhari and Sunni sources and in Shia sources. Took the hand of Ali and said, this is my successor. Abu Lahab making fun of Abu Talib, he's like, have fun taking orders from your son who is going to be your leader. So that until, you know, it's, it's, it goes up to, to, to that degree where people were doubting the Prophet. But he gave everyone the chance to be the Caliph, yet no one stood except for Ali ibn Talib. So who is the Caliph? We'll get to talk about later. Uh, but uh, let's read some of the Facebook comments that we got. Uh, Ayman Zahra, once again, uh, joining us in tonight's episode again. My Imam is Imam Ali, alayhi salam, and he is the true successor and flag bearer of Holy Prophet. Ali is Haq and Haq is Ali. Thank you very much, uh, Ayman uh, Zahra for joining us tonight. Uh, Maryam Rana, she says, I read this quote once and I really want to share it, okay? Uh, someone said, who are your four caliphs? So maybe someone asked her. And I replied, Ali, 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 Ali. Wow, okay. So, and she continues, she says, Moses prayed to Allah that, uh, that make Harun my wazir. He could have given him that position himself, but he asked Allah, to make him his wazir, his, his caliph, his successor. This prayer indicates that prophets, religious personalities, could not give someone succession but by themselves. It is a divine order, a divine power. Allah made Adam the first caliph, but did not give him a throne nor a crown. The message is long, uh, but thank you very much, uh, Maryam Rana, for joining us tonight once again. Uh, we just received a text message from... Oh, Razia again from Norway, she says, My Caliph is the one who, whose hand was raised by the beloved Prophet at Ghadir Khum by making Imam Ali his successor. He completed his message. Thank you very much, uh, Razia from Norway. I don't know why I'm tempted to write everyone's name that participates again and put it in the bowl, but you know, it's, uh, I, I have to be honest with myself and with the show as well, so we can't do that. But thank you very much uh, for those who joined us again. Uh, but uh, going back to tonight's topic and how uh, and how people should choose who their caliph is. Again, we do remind everyone that we got a few minutes left into the show. If you think your caliph is someone else than Ali Talib, do let us know who and do let us know why you've chosen him. So, if we were to look at some of the characteristics and why Ali ibn Abi Talib was chosen to be a caliph, well, if we go to some of his characteristics, 
who was raised, who, or who raised Imam Ali, was Rasulullah, peace and blessings be upon him. Who married the holiest woman? Imam Ali married a Zahra. Had the holiest children, Hassan and Hussein, mentioned in the Quran and in the Hadith. Stuck while, uh, struck while performing the holiest act, during the holiest nights, during the holiest position, in the holiest month, on the holiest night. Now, it should be clear who your caliph should be. But we just received a call from Hussein from Iraq. Assalamu alaikum Hussein, welcome to Ajta and And tonight's question, who is your caliph? Hello? Hello? Okay, some technical difficulties. Maybe you can hear me. Okay. Thank you very much, Hussein, for trying to contact us. Um, but when I mentioned these, if you guys didn't hear me, um, raised by Prophet Muhammad, married the holiest woman, Al Zahra, had the holiest children. Um, I think Hussein is back on the line. Hussein's back on the line. Okay, Assalamu alaikum, Hussein. Welcome to hashtag Galanti once again. And your question for tonight Who is your caliph? Uh, I think uh, that uh, Imam Ali is uh, the most worthy of the uh, club uh, because uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, appointed him on uh, Gadir Qum and also he is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Imam Ali is your caliph again. Uh, he's the most worthy uh, to be uh, the caliph. Thank you very much, Hussein, for joining us tonight. Um, so basically, there you have it. Everyone that called in, everyone that participated, said that Imam Ali is their caliph, and right they chose. Um, but um, that's it for tonight. We mentioned a lot of points for you guys to understand. Um, who your caliph should be and why he should be your caliph. That's it for tonight. I'm Ahmed Ali coming to you from hashtag guarantee. Join us in the upcoming episodes 2 a.m. Karbala time, 12 a.m. London time, 7 p.m. Washington DC time. That's it for tonight. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.